Hello, one and all, and welcome to this DC breakdown of Escape from the Blood Keep. Episode 2, I'm the Dungeon Coach, and that was my impersonation of Brendan Lee Mulligan and this awesome series of Escape from the Blood Keep. I did my breakdown of episode 1, and I hear you guys in the comments. Literally every single person but maybe one said Escape from the Blood Keep. Y'all want to see this full series? I hear you, and we're doing it. We're doing the full series, episodes 1 all the way through 6. Then I'll go back to the drawing board and see what you guys want to see next, because I'm in this thing with y'all. Throw a like on the video helps get these DC breakdowns out to more people and subscribing helps the channel overall. So thanks for that and let's get into it. For this first clip and you guys have said you like these small subtle things, I'm going to keep finding them for you. I got you. It's a very subtle thing that actually happens before the game even starts. There's times in the game where players ask questions, whether it's about the rules or about something about the world or just words in general like in this one and you don't want to in the same way from my teaching background there's no such thing as a stupid question you want to have that aura as a dungeon master so that players feel comfortable asking anything so in this clip brennan uses a word that's not understood by a player and then i'm also going to show you the battle map because oh my god this whole episode is combat on this battle map and it is beautiful the caldera of the volcano is much larger than this. This is almost, and you think of the caldera Okay, I'm going to be a dumb dummy. What, no what say call it? What is it called? The hole. The hole where the lava come out. Hole. Hole. Yeah. Lava the, hole. The lava hole. Okay. The place where in science fair you would pour the vinegar and the Funny baking now. soda. That okay. is... <laughs> Great analogy back is, to science fair. some kids actually had like a vent side in the story. side to be extra fancy. Did you guys ever see? Never mind. Uh, is this, did they make a bond? Cauldron? Yeah, did they make a bond? Cauldron. Is this related to the word cauldron? It is. Uh, etymologically related to the word cauldron, yeah. Cauldron, caldera? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all, all the pieces are coming Cause again. Finally, I'm starting to see what Isn't we're doing. Isn't language fascinating? <laughs> fascinating? Now here's the map. So we'll break down the caldera thing in a second. But look at this map. Oh my God, look at this map. Volcano swirl in the center over lava. And lava is just a terribly dangerous and terrifying thing in D&D already. You have raised elevated platforms with bridges interconnected alongside. Enemies at the top up here. The players and NPCs are around this little sexual situation with the anvil. And oh, oh my God. But the subtle things about this caldera thing. He says caldera and Br Brennan Lee Mulligan is a smart dude, highly educated person in general, large vocabulary, et cetera, whatever. And when you're describing stuff, sometimes you might say something, whether it's a actual English word in the English language or use a mechanic. Maybe it's something about flanking or something about difficult terrain and they don't know what difficult terrain is. You want to establish a feel at the table that they can ask about any of that. So the step-by-step -step process here, as soon as she raises her hand, she's like, okay, well, I'm going to be dumb here. What's a caldera? And then they all, uh, the whole water lava come out, just like a super simple and that's that alone is even funny also in the clip you notice that matt is starting to explain like with his hands sitting right next to her which we'll get to that in a second too about the players kind of all coming together like oh yeah it's like this thing and then brennan goes and makes a metaphor about oh it's like back in the science fair project you know when you had the thing and that's where you pour the thing oh cool and then this part's a little more subtle and i do this myself too and these are all things you don't really think about until you think back to them but instead of just being like yeah no it's the place where the lava comes out you know the science fair project oh, okay so back to my story that i really want no just take a moment take a moment it's fine then he starts talking about a hole in the side of it and they make a bong joke about the volcano bong and then someone asks about is that where cauldron comes caldera cauldron oh my gosh and then there's a funny joke so it all like takes the pressure off of this feeling of like asking a dumb question and i interrupted the game you're not going to feel like you interrupted the game if there was a cool funny thing that happened because of it so a lot of times whenever i have little side stories take a little moment to have a little side story detour especially at the beginning of a session and go right back into it so the player doesn't feel like an idiot for stopping and asking a question because the opposite of that if that happens and they don't feel comfortable they're going to be confused they're not going to say anything and then they're going to be like trying to figure it out have you any of y'all sat in class and then you don't understand something you don't ask a question and you're just sitting there confused it's not a fun experience you want everybody to be engaged and this will help that now this next clip ties into the first one about the environment of the table and the players connecting with each other the dungeon master should set up an environment for that and the players should too to all feel one and welcome because there's going to be different levels of play across the table experience levels from veterans have played the game for years and brand new players sitting at the same table now dimension 20 which is where all of this is on all these full episodes will always be linked in the description as well but dimension 20 does a very good job of this of strategically placing players i feel like it's strategic i'm gonna have to ask brennan or something but i truly do think it's strategic of setting the most experienced players next to the least experienced players i do the same thing at my table with putting the brand new players directly on either side of me of my dungeon master screen and i just realized that brennan does the same thing too here with this setup so in this clip reka is 
is a brand new player who is going to have a confusion about some super little subtle rule thing that normally would stop and the dungeon master would have to say something. But she's sitting next to Matt Mercer. <laughs> a great person to sit next to if you're new at this game and he very simply handles the problem check it out <laughs> and sorry failing that one sorry. means getting what when you rolled failing uh you succeeded yes okay. so you take two damage okay super simple moment she's sitting right next to matt and right next to brennan for the record as well because he could easily lean over and do that as well but it saves you as a dungeon master you have plenty of stuff going on to be able to deal with and orchestrate now i'm not saying stop and it's oh and a player shouldn't i just talked about how players should ask questions but it's also a smart thing to pair up by seating the players next to other players that could help them just makes your life easier as a dungeon master time out speaking of things that help you out as a dungeon master i couldn't help myself with the segue here every single month over on my patreon i give my patrons dc playbooks that help lower down your game prep increase the fun and creativity with a bunch of different options of things that me and my team have professionally prepared for you so that you can just plug them into your games right now this week they come out every single month along with an additional homebrew system like enchanting potion crafting there's a ton of stuff now that i've been making content like this for over a year year now so if you want to become a patron check it out link down in the description you can get this month's issue of the dc playbook and all those resources and dm tools and you can also check out the website for any past versions if you want to check out things that you might have missed so i hope i can help you on that dm journey with actual resources and with breakdown videos like this so back to it now this next clip is one of the best things and this is the curveball of the episode for this battle map that i beautifully showed you guys how awesome it is trust me all the dimension 20 battle maps are insane and custom built for the record the team that they have there is amazing but anyway there is a little breadcrumb nugget that brennan left this player and the player acted on that little nugget and oh my god look what happens for those of you that don't know the breadcrumb back in episode one brennan talked about some sort of lava mog that's in some of the volcano and he just threw out this little thing and if you go back to it it's really it's really a small thing but this player remembered it and he wants to do something he's hesitant about it so watch that hesitation we'll break down the moment after but here's the curveball of the battle. This feels like it might be a waste of a turn, but uh, I have to do it because it just seems fun. Uh, so am I correct in remembering that they said that the that the lava mob was living in the scary volcano? Yes, yeah. you were. Ooh, can I do some kind of nature check or something to see? Could I try to call, Look at the faces. Or, like, <gasps> call the Mike, lava mob? Could you please roll me a nature check with advantage? Ooh. See, I Giving you that, advantage. I didn't want to bait the RP. So Respect. Shut up. Yeah. Oh my yeah, yeah. god. Other player oh, listening. Right. Here we go. Ooh, that is a 19 plus Ooh. six, so 25. <laughs> Bog Lord, Master <gasps> of Beasts. What does Soap Bar do in this moment? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, just giving it to your players. Shadow, creatures of darkness, I have come to me, come to my aid. Oh, no. Come, no. no. <laughs> Look at that. Rising from the magma <laughs> is the single most beautiful creature soap bar. God. <laughs> you see, even Jeremy looks at it and goes, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? That is so insane. I've had minis hidden in like the shelf behind me or under the thing or in a box and waited for certain moments to happen that may or may not have happened. I don't know what Brennan would have done if the lava, if he never reached and, and, and did something with a lava mug. I don't know what would happen. If it was myself, I know that I have this lava mug. I know I'm going to introduce it at some point and I'm going to give a round or two to see if anything's happening because this is a big, huge curveball I'm holding on to, a trump card, you could say. And then then is I'm looking for anything I could connect it to it, whether it's a player in getting close to it or whatever it is. But this was a moment amazing. He planted the seed. The player knew it, acted on it amazing so i guess the next level tips would be bait your players into doing things that you know you have stuff for and then it gives them the awesome cool reveal instead of just i have a big cool lava mug i want to throw at you so here it is let them trigger it and then this player has some sort of connection and control over it as well and can actually talk to it and stuff it's amazing 
For this clip, we're getting into some combat and some homebrew mechanic shenanigans with a chain. And oh my God, the Barbarian Reka is going to, this is going to combine everything. All these tips are coming together in one here. You'll see the whole big picture. I love this clip is Reka wants to do some crazy stuff and she just says what she wants to do. And then Brennan's going to be able to try and piece it together and let the dice go from there. Right? So she is trying to get this chain that's next to her because, because this awesome little battle map they have, there's a little mini chain there. She sees it, wants to do something with it. She wants to like lasso people and like bring them into the lava and a bunch of craziness so uh, what are the rules say on this what do we do here i don't know we have attacks we have chain attacks we have restrict what's going on so Brennan's gonna lay it down here walk through the whole step there's gonna be multiple little things here i might stop the video for and show you the different parts of this big picture because also watch how brennan sets the stage it's not just do this okay do this okay he sets the stage it feels more fair whenever you set the stage there's gonna be things he says if you get a 25 then this happens because then if someone rolls and they get like a 23 and then uh, it works and it does it does it really earned or whatever so saying the numbers beforehand when things get weird i do that a lot and it's mainly because i pay respects to props to brennan in this because i truly see the value of it and it feels better so if they roll below that threshold you said you said it beforehand it feels okay and they're trying to do some shenanigans in the first place right and you can really that number you pick shows how crazy it is because if it's something not that crazy you could come out with a 15 or a 20 but he throws out a 25 let's show the clip this is gonna be an athletics check uh you're gonna need a 25 to get the even one guy. You if you that. get you a, uh, uh, if you get a 30, which I think you, uh, uh, which would require you to roll a nat 20, yes. uh, then you can get more than one guy and we'll roll for how many you get. So Love the nat 20 twice. Says. You're looking for a 15 or higher. 15. 15, so you get at least one. Now, if this is a nat 20, you can get as many as you want. <laughs> Crazy net 20. I, oh net 20 hype. Five. Five. Okay, cool. Okay. So you whip still the chain around this guy uh, as your she attack. You yeah. have completely restrained him with your chain. Um, awesome. Uh, cool. Hell yeah. Cool idea. Um, uh, as part of the same attack, Can you, more? you whip him up. You're going to make an opposed uh, strength roll okay. with him. You want to cool. get advantage cool. on this. I'm going to tell you what you need to beat. Setting the bar again. You need to beat a uh, 21. Okay. So you add the five there. Okay. Helping, again, see the thing we said before? Matt, sitting right next to her, you're going to add the five. Because this is some crazy stuff that's happening right now. We're in homebrew shenanigan land right now. Matt sitting next to her, once again, beautiful. <laughs> oh, he's just going to add five right there. Boom, perfect. Love it. Keep it going. Eleven. Plus five. Okay, okay, okay. Two plus five. Two plus five. Cool. So he's oh. fully restrained, but you don't yank him into the lava yet. All right. And there we go. A player wanted to do something crazy. She said what she wanted to do. We had checks to see if it's even possible in the first place. And this is almost like layers of how crazy do we go here? Do we keep going to the next spot? How many checkpoints of rolls do you want in the way? Is it a straight check against the DC or is it a contest, right? And and the more checks you add, the more difficult it becomes, right? So it's super cool to see. All right, you have two attacks. Let's see what you can make it happen with here. They used both attacks to see. All right, cool. They set the how many people did you get? You got one. Okay. Worst case scenario, they're still restrained and grappled because you tried to do something cool with this whole thing. You had one roll succeed. Cool. And it was a high DC as well. So they're they're chained up and restrained right now in these chains. Can you make it even better? Contest. No, you can't, but it's still super cool. And if it did happen, it would still feel earned because you had to make checks for it. And the dungeon master is not just like letting you roll stuff and then you say numbers and then he says what you do and then it all just feels less earned. We got another curveball here, y'all. We're in the middle of this combat and there's going to be a moment whenever the players start to win, especially higher level players. They're working together. The players are always going to win and they are going to surprise you every time. But have a curveball, a layer two curveball up your sleeve to change the dynamic of the combat instead of just we kill them before they kill us. Add an alternative win condition or in just an alternative condition here. There's an NPC here that he's about to role play as well. And also Brennan loves to add extra little bit of semi meta, like funny humor stuff that that character probably wouldn't have said in that moment but it's really funny it's just it's just it, i didn't do that enough as a dungeon master. that's another little side tip here that just came to me too many times i would take these moments and only be serious in the moment but brennan embellishes on some of these moments and takes a moment for some humor to be interjected in into the seriousness of what's at stake the stage so far has been there's this anvil that these npcs these good guys are trying to get away from the bad guys who are the players this is an evil campaign they're trying to get this anvil and this npc comes up with a lateral move here let's see what happens Kasara the beige 
looks past the screaming lava mog and says, uh, it might be time to start wrapping up here, everybody. This monster is extremely bad. Um, uh, she looks at the anvil, raises her staff. I want an attack of opportunity on that anvil. Um, and... Also, Space, look at the great animations here. I mean, that's so cool that it's the miniatures. Mist, the anvil falls through it. Mm. Anyone that would like to make an arcana check if they want. Arcana mm. check doesn't just well. tell it to them. Ooh. Now, if you're next level yeah. and you maybe know, but you can 19. see if your character knows. Ooh. Make those checks. I'm not going to bother to. Uh, uh, Preston, you see this. Uh, uh, 26. Uh, she has cast a banishment spell on this, uh, on this anvil. Um, you know, with a twenty-six, uh, sh- it will. It is gone immediately, but is not gone forever immediately. Uh, she's got to hold on to that for a minute for it to be f- well and fully uh, sent into the nightmare lands, past the edge of the world. So now the game's changed. It's not just kill them before they. Now she can get away. She banished them. She can get away. Yeah, it takes a minute, which is ten rounds or whatever. She could get away before then and have to stop them. And then if she's gone, and then time goes by faster when you're outside of combat, etc. This is now the change. They haven't won yet. They have to stop this, so they have to break her concentration on it. There's now the game changes, and that was a really cool curveball to see an hour plus into this episode. So in the same way that you have that lava mog that you're holding on to, have curveballs that you're holding on to. Maybe have a couple curveballs that you're holding on to and choose to use them or not. There's been plenty of times that I've had curveballs that I have came up with on the fly and used i've had curveballs that i didn't use it's all the feel in the moment of what you got going on but the more you can prepare beforehand the better now this clip is a great conversation and a perfect example of a player that wants to do something that may or may not know all the intricacies of the rules but even then that doesn't matter because you're going outside the box with these rules anyway and these type of rules you, there's no reasonable expectation you'd have for a player to know what the things i'm about to show you is but either way it doesn't matter because you're talking to your dungeon master they're the referee here's what i want to do like what about this what about that and it's this really nice back and forth between the two of them to show what's possible and what's not because at the end of the day there's an action economy that every creature on the battlefield has what's possible what's not then we let the dice decide so like i just said from the last clip they have this npc that they're trying to break the concentration of and she's at the very edge of this cliff there she is these wolves are the wolves in question that are trying to grapple and attack the wings of this character who's holding the concentration there's that lava mock crazy here we go they're just they're just gonna be poised ready to um push her into the lava or Do you want her. them to attempt to push her in or to attempt to damage her? Well, she's got wings, right? Yeah. Um, will, will the pushing her affect her concentration? Uh, for... Probably not. Probably damage will affect concentration. Yeah. Uh, wargs can't grapple, can they? They can. Can they, like... Can... Grappling doesn't affect spell casting altogether that much. Got it. Because being held in one spot is not going to affect her concentration. If she's, and she's not going to be able to fly away... So that is good. That wasn't, I guess, clarified right then because that's his intent. But th- this whole thing is trying to barter for what are you trying to do? What's your intent? And damaging would be things that cause concentration checks and stuff. But grappling would not cause that. But we're still going. Here we go. Like grapple and just fall into <laughs> oh, the lava? They are loyal to you. If you want them Kill to her. try to, ma- okay. to make the suicide play, you can, can totally they do eat that. Or her wings. Yeah, just bite <laughs> onto the wings and Regardless, fly off. It, it takes their turn so getting to them. Sure. <laughs> so at the end of that, you hear Brennan say, regardless, it takes their turn getting to her. And and then we can see what happens from there. So we established what the player wanted to do. Now, again, this turn cannot do that. So we don't need to fully flesh out and cut, come up with what the actual resolution is. There's no dice to be rolled because the entire turn of these wolves was spent getting up to that spot. But the back and forth was there. And now the rest of the players can go around and that player can think about what he wants to do. But he, he can think about what he wants to do with the information of knowing what's possible. So then on the next turn, you could say something like the one of the wolves wants to do a shove of some kind for some sort of a contest to see if they can get her off the ledge. And then the other one can try and grapple her, reducing the speed to zero. And then they both can suicide with i feel like that would be an interesting fair use of each wolf has one check they both have to succeed to get this thing to work right one's going to try and push the other's going to try and grapple so they roll for both and you can see which one happens and there's multiple scenarios maybe they get shoved but the grapple one misses and then they fall off into the lava so you have a ton of different scenarios that you can plan on two different wolves doing two different things and see what the outcome is if they both fail it's going to be real bad and they're both in the lava or whatever maybe Uh, or if they both succeed you get to do what the thing is you're trying to do 
There we go, episode two. Let me know what you think. And in this fashion, they're going to be back and forth between episode three is going to be some sort of story-based acceleration, some sort of things going on. It's a lot of really cool stuff. And then episode four is combat. That's in general how Dimension 20 has done it is an episode, then full combat, an episode, then full combat. Really cool back and forth with it. That's going to be a really cool back and forth here to get all the different parts of the game and pick out all the little stuff they want to break down. Comment below. If you've actually seen episode three and there's specific parts from episode three you want to see me do a breakdown on or a question you want to me to specifically ask Brennan I can try and uh, do that for you guys and see what's going on keep staying creative and <laughs> thinking outside the box peace